The Neil Mellor Football Show is sponsored by the Red Balloon Toy Shop, selling classic toys for today's kids. Find us by West Kirby Train Station. Yes, hello once again. Welcome to the Neil Mellor Football Show. That's a very good toy shop, by the way, Neil. Do you go there a lot? Been there a couple of times. Obviously, Christmas around the corner. Good man. Yeah. Thoroughly recommend it. Yeah. yeah. Number one on the Wirral? Certainly is. Good stuff. That's what I want to hear. Uh, not that I've got any sort of personal interest in that venture at all. Uh, now then, what an absolutely stunning weekend. It's got to be said, I don't think, if you'd have said Liverpool and Everton combined would knock in nine goals this weekend, we, we would have said, well, I don't think so, because mainly because Tottenham had such a decent defensive record. Liverpool not been doing particularly well away. I don't think they won away since September. And then suddenly, we're going to start with Liverpool, obviously, because... Well, you were there and they scored five goals away from home. But what an absolutely storming performance. Yeah, obviously, uh, before the game, probably a, a little bit nervous because obviously the news of Steven Gerrard being out injured, a little bit of a doubt with Henderson before the game as well. And you're thinking, potentially, we were going to get overrun in that midfield area. I, I was concerned by that. And obviously, our away form has, has been poor. Like you say, we haven't won away since, I think, Sunderland. So it was, uh, it's been a concern. But home form has been that good. I think the pleasing thing was the fact that maybe the whole game was a little bit of a wake-up call. The fact that we were beaten a little bit easily there, responded brilliantly with two home victories, battered Norwich, battered... Well, I didn't really batter West Ham. And then we're going into the game against Tottenham full of confidence. Everyone was saying they're on a good little run of form. But I felt as though didn't never felt that because they'd beaten two of the bottom three teams away from home, only just as well, not convincing victories. So yeah. I felt as though... If Luis Suarez was on form, which he's been on absolute fire, we had the potential to go there and win, but I don't think anybody... There's, there's no way anyone went into a bookies and went 5-0. <laughs> but no, uh, but no, if, if they not. did, then, uh, then fair enough. But it, it, was, it was it was the best away performance that I, I've witnessed um, for Liverpool. It, it was absolutely brilliant. It was a joy to be there. At half-time, 2-0 up, it was brilliant. You're thinking that second goal was vital. To get the second goal in that first half was, it was a setback for Tottenham because... In previous games, they'd been trailing 1-0 and had a bit of belief to come back and, and get some, some points from it. But second goal really killed them. And we controlled the game throughout and it was, uh, it was a brilliant team, team performance overall. Yeah, it really was. You said they're the best away performance by Liverpool you've seen, yeah. obviously this season, but going back a number of years, maybe since that 4-1 at Old Trafford. Yeah, well, I think the thing is everyone's saying, oh, Tottenham are a top four side and they're one of the big teams in the Premier League. So, so it's a big statement to go to a so-called big team and really yeah, demolish them. Absolutely thrash Tottenham on, on Sunday uh, afternoon. So it was uh, a bit of a statement to the rest of the Premier League saying we are certainly in this top four race. Yeah, and there have been 12 matches this season between the, the big six. We're going to leave Everton out of that, I'm afraid. Uh, Man U, Man City, Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs and Liverpool. And the Sundays was the first time one of those big six has won away from home this season. So in terms of maybe a little, a little shift in people's perceptions of Liverpool Football Club this season, you know, everyone's been saying they'll be lucky to get into the top four despite the form. And suddenly, City and Chelsea coming up, those sets of players and management are now going to be thinking, oh, hang on, we could have a proper game here. Yeah, I think you're a bit unfair to dismiss Everton because I really feel as though... Well, only because the stat doesn't work if I they're don't. They're a major think. threat, though, for this top four. But, like you say, that victory against Tottenham will give Liverpool the players a real big lift going into two massive uh, away games obviously Cardiff comes first but when you go into the Man City game if, if we'd have been beaten at Tottenham confidence would have been a little bit fragile but throughout the season we, we've been hampered by injuries you think about the, we've missed key players throughout the season we've missed mm. Glenn Johnson for a period of games Coutinho we missed him with his shoulder injury Sturridge Steven Gerrard so con Enrique could perhaps class him and as Suarez banned for the first five Suarez first five so throughout the season we've been hampered and yet we, we set ourselves going a couple well 10 days or so before Christmas, sitting ourselves in second place in the Premier League. It's been a fantastic start to the season. Yeah, and beat Cardiff on Saturday. Liverpool will be top of the league until Monday night at least, which would be absolutely sensational. There's going to be a big debate now, isn't there, about Steven Gerrard and this team. He was sat in the, in the studio for the TV yesterday watching it, and at the, at the end of the game, he was asked the question, are you going to get back into this team? And he, he laughed and said, you know, well, I don't need to rush back. But there will be now a certain section of, of the media, of the fans saying, well, hang on. With Gerrard in the team, they wouldn't have performed like that. So is there a debate that says, is there an argument to be made for Gerrard maybe step aside some? Well, I, I, I think that's a bit harsh, to be honest. I think uh, with Stevie in the side, then there's no reason why we wouldn't have performed like that. I, th I must admit, I thought Joe Allen, Lucas and Henderson, 
I was concerned. I even said on Radio City, I felt as though that as a midfield three was probably not strong enough to, to get ourselves into the top four places, but completely out-battled, dominated the midfield against Tottenham. Tottenham had a strong midfield. I think it was a big boost to see Sandro going off. I think he's a key player for Tottenham. He went off fairly early on in the game and that freed up more space. I mean, Jordan Henderson, I mean, he has been criticised a little bit last season, but he's been absolutely magnificent for Liverpool this season. And he, For me, he was the best player. He was everywhere. For some reason, Tottenham play a high line defensively. I don't understand why, because it means you can have midfield. If you've got a brave midfield that wants to run past that defence, you're going to get in time and time again. And Jordan Henderson did that. I mean, for the, for the first goal, he ran in behind the Tottenham defence, put Dawson under pressure, Suarez scored. Second goal, he gets the goal running in behind the Tottenham defence. It was, it was constant. Raheem Sterling, something that I've been asking him to, well, I'm not asking him personally, but wanting him to introduce to his game. Pleading with him, in fact. Yeah, he, he may have even been watching, just running behind the defence <laughs> with that pace, scared him. Don't get the ball and run. Run in behind and you will get the ball. And he's, he's introduced that. I felt as though the goal against Norwich gave him the confidence. Much better performance against West Ham and again against Tottenham. He's really grown into confidence and now he's playing the best since he burst onto the yeah, scene. Yeah, he looks really like a, a real confidence player, doesn't he? One really of those ones has, that needs an arm around him. and Really has kicked on and yeah, he's only 19. Flanagan, he's still 20. He was superb. Made that left-back position his own. and It's a little bit more special when one of your own does so well. I mean, people are comparing him to a young Jamie Carragher, but he really has that competitive determination, commitment that local fans want to see and he, he has got that in abundance and it's great to see him doing well. Great goal as well. Yeah, and he's clearly very popular with the, the staff at Liverpool because the, when that goal went in, the whole team piled onto him. Suarez afterwards you know, was chatting about how fantastic he thought he was. Gerard in the studio saying how delighted he was. So there's clearly a, a real groundswell of love internally for, for young Flanagan. Yeah, uh, and I must admit, Brendan Rodgers, sometimes you always see the cameras go to the manager on the bench. Brendan Rodgers ran 20 yards down the touchline. So he, was, he was that made up. It reminded me of Mourinho at Old Trafford that time. He didn't quite get as far, but he, 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 he was really made His little up. Little legs ran out of steam, did and they? A, and a little uh, thumbs up to Kenny Dalglish, who was in the director's box as well, because obviously Kenny gave John Flanagan his chance. I think you have to give Flanagan huge credit because when he had a run in the side, he was almost forgotten about. He, he was playing reserve team football, the under 21s, and probably thought, have I got a future? But he kept working hard mm. and he was a, he's got himself back in on merit and he's not going to get dislodged because he's playing extremely well. Now, this, this Luis Suarez character, I mean, what an absolutely sensational run he's on. He's now scored more goals than 10 of the 20 Premier League teams on his own. Uh, and just a little stat that says how he's improved. Uh, he took 206 shots to score his first 17 goals for Liverpool. He's got 17 goals in 68 shots this season, which is an astonishing conversion rate. He's, he's the Liverpool player who scored the most goals in the league before Christmas, breaking Robbie Fowler's record. Um, it took Fowler 19 games. It's taken Suarez 11. So just, just is there a player in world football who's hotter than Luis Suarez? No, you'd have to say not. I mean, I, I don't watch the Spanish football. You, don't, you just hear the stories of Ronaldo and Messi, don't you? But Suarez is on absolute fire at the moment. He's, he's a joy to watch every single game. Like you say, those sort of goal-scoring stats. It's funny because you always sometimes hear those sort of stats in like the end of August, September, oh, scored more goals than that team. We're saying this at Christmas time. <laughs> so the, it just shows what a phenomenal season that he's actually having and, and how important it is. I mean... People will probably link him again with the move away, but if you're a player playing extremely well, enjoying your football, getting the best out of yourself, then that's the place to stay. And that, that is why I believe Luis Suarez will stay. He gets us into those top four places and uh, just really have a, an excellent season. 30 last season, no reason why he can't hit that figure again this season. Well, he's going to hit that by the middle of February, the way he's going. Um, but there's, there's also, every time he scores a goal, there's, a, there's almost a, like a, uh-oh, he's getting too good now for, for Liverpool in their current position in Real Madrid or Barcelona are going to come knocking. Is, is, what, what is the tipping point? When does the money, is it 70 million? Is it 80 million? Is it 100 million? When do the club, the owners say, too good to turn down? Well, we've seen with Tottenham, haven't we? You know, they lost their you know, major player in Gareth Bale, got 100 million quid for him or whatever the official figure was, late 80s, whatever it was. And, and they've just not replaced him at all. They've spent over 100 million pound and not one of them has... Really set the Premier League alight. Not one of them settled in, and that's why ABV, VB 
puts, he's under pressure at the moment because not one of them's knew the Premier League, so they're all foreign to the Premier League and, and not done the business. So that's the risk and a little bit of a learning curve for other clubs that think, OK, we may get the money, but unless these players come in and, and do the business, then mm. you're going to struggle and, and Tottenham have, have struggled. Yeah, and of course the player might, might be able to be convinced that you're not going to score goals, you're not going to be as loved elsewhere, so that's a job. For the manager and it was do, a big statement yesterday from Brendan Rodgers to give him the captain's arm. And obviously in the summer, there was a lot of speculation, including mm -hmm. Suarez himself, about leaving. He's staying and, and his performances have shown how fully committed he is for Liverpool. And to get the captain's arm, and it almost gave him an extra 5%. Not that he needed it, Luis Suarez, but you know, two more goals, a couple of more assists. And he, he's absolutely outstanding. And as a fan, and there was plenty that, that went down there on the train uh, down to London yesterday, it's... You're excited to watch him. We've not even mentioned Coutinho because Coutinho was excellent as well. Him and him and Suarez are such clever players. And when you've got players like that with movement, there's always going to be opportunities to score goals. And Liverpool, the great entertainers of the Premier League this season, scoring no nil nil, scoring goals for fun. Yeah, they're knocking nice him in. Nice to get a clean sheet. You know that was a bit of a surprise, but it was nice to get a clean sheet. Yeah, 38 league games. Uh, sorry, the last 38 league games they've scored 88 goals, which is sensational. If you did that in a in a season as opposed to over two seasons, then you're probably winning the title. Well, exactly. <laughs> it's been a joy, absolute joy to watch. Hopefully that will continue. And there were some more goal-scoring stats that Mr Stato over there was giving us before. What was that, the stat you were giving me about goal-scoring earlier? Liverpool scored 79 goals in 2013, which is the most. Liverpool scored 79 goals in 2013, which is the most in the Premier League. Compare that to Manchester United, only scored 61. There you go. We don't, we don't need to worry about Man United. You know, they're they're going to finish <laughs> yeah. below us this season. That's what we want to hear. Good stuff. <laughs> Easy teasy. Now, did you know Liverpool have scored more goals from open play at White Hart Lane this season than Spurs have? <laughs> How about that, that? that? That's been Tottenham's major problem, scoring goals. It's, it's funny because people say about AVB and, you know, he's, he is a young manager, but he's, this is only his first job he's ever been in his second season. He's had Porto, Chelsea, now Tottenham, three big, big European clubs. And yet this is only... First time he's been in the second season. People say the way AVB sets up is to almost counter attack the team he's playing against rather than go out and attack and dominate games. He's almost like setting his team up around them to stop them. And for me, that, that is negative, and that's why they just don't really look like a goal threat at all. I mean, yesterday, no. barely even threatened the goal. Well, they didn't have a single shot on target in 90 minutes it's, at home, it's which is astonishing. I mean, you, you, that just can't, you can't have that at all. Yeah, I've got a Tottenham fan who texted me after the game and said, all he said was, has he been sacked yet? <laughs> that's, all he wants, that's all they're interested in, I think. Change it, move on. And somewhere, Harry Redknapp sitting, managing a team in the Championship, just, just shaking that funny looking head of his, thinking, what on earth did I do wrong? Well, any team that gets battered at home 5 0, the manager's going to be under pressure. Got battered 6 7. 6 at City, six didn't they? 6 at City. Yeah, so. strange. I was at City, Arsenal, on, on Saturday. Um, and I spoke to you on Saturday night and said, well, you're not going to see six goals from Liverpool on tomorrow. But blimey, we nearly did, didn't we? No, yeah. I mean, it, it was a big three points. I mean, going into the game, three points, give us the confidence going into that festive period. And I mean, to score five goals as well was a huge, huge bonus. Just a quick word on Joe Allen. He, you know, kind of the forgotten man at this performance because everyone else was so good. But he made, he made eight tackles in the central pitch, which was the, the joint most this weekend of any player in the Premier League alongside Lee Catamol. So he's adding something, just very nicely tidying up, laying the ball off and letting other people take their lines. Yeah, just quietly got on with his business, didn't he? And, and it, it did work, Lucas, him and Henderson, because obviously Henderson was the one who really dominated that midfield. But Joe Allen, he was pressing up high, Lucas and winning the ball back. He wasn't on his own, two, threes, all trying to win the ball back. He was, it was a good, like I said, good team performance. There wasn't one performer out there who, who didn't perform well for Liverpool. No, maybe the only thing I'd, I'd worry about slightly is Sacco's um, possession and, and the way he distributes the ball. He, he tends to panic a little bit when he's on the ball. When he goes past the halfway line, he's, <laughs> he's thinking they don't really know what to do. The only worry is the space that he leaves in behind, but um, Tottenham weren't good enough to utilise that. Yeah. He played that very strange back pass, didn't he, when Soldado knocked Mignolet over and knocked the ball into the net. That was from a very strange ball from Sacco. Yeah, but he is a real aggressive attacking defender, isn't he? When the ball comes into the box, he really is powerful and yeah. Really wants to win, uh, and not even mentioned Daniel Agger was on the bench. You know, that to me was a bit of a statement from Brendan Rodgers saying that Sacco's my number one left sided centre half, so Agger's going to have to fight mm. to get that place back. Yeah, Tottenham fans call Sandro the beast, but I think Liverpool have got their own beast. He don't is they? a beast because I was right by the tunnel, he is massive, that Sandro. And, and I said it was a big boost to see him going off because I think he's a good player. Yeah, yeah, well, didn't have much of a 
didn't have much of a roar, did he, yesterday, Sandro, for those 30 minutes? Um, OK, well, there you go. Liverpool second place. Everton, though, you know, chugging on very nicely, aren't they? Another, another very good performance from there. Maybe not a surprising one, because Everton have beaten Fulham now 21 straight straight times at, at Goodison Park. So that certainly wasn't a surprise result. But I think I listened to the, um, the commentary of the Everton game on the way home from City, and your, your oppo, Graham Sharp, was was a little bit worried when it got to 1-1 because Everton weren't flowing, they weren't creating, but they got a couple of, a couple of lucky goals towards the end. And then 4-1, there you go again, scoring goals. Well, well, exactly. It may not have been Everton's greatest performance, but they've ground out a victory against a side they were expected to beat. And maybe this is the difference under Martin, as you know, last three games at home, three against Liverpool, four Stoke, was it? Four again, you know, all of a sudden the Everton fans are getting entertained as well. They're seeing lots and lots of goals yeah. and, and, that, and that's what's needed to be winning these games. It was a tight game, they scored three in the last 20 minutes but went on to get an, an important three points and the games coming up for Everton in this festive period are all all where you can see them getting Winnable. lots of points from, apart from the Swansea away, they're at, you know, Southampton at home I think and someone else in the Sunderland is it? At, yeah, I think at it is. Home. Yeah. So, so these are all games where Everton are thinking they can really cement that top four place going into the new year and, and the four points clear of, of um, sixth place or the fifth at the moment but it's starting to, to break away a little mm. bit that top five. Yeah, and you're right about the home form. They're unbeaten in 17 home games now, Everton. So it's, you know, the old cliche of a fortress but they're proving that they are very, very hard to beat at home. Really tough place to go and they've only been beaten once against the team you probably fancied to win the Premier League title in Man City. So I think Everton couldn't really ask for much more in Martinez's first season. It's been a terrific start. Yeah, and the four goals they scored against Fulham means it was the uh, four goals in consecutive games at Goodison Park for only the sixth time in Premier League history. Huge, huge credit to them for that. So Martinez knocking them around. What about this injury to Delefeu? That's... He looks like he could be missing for maybe up to 10 games, they're talking about, because it's quite a nasty hamstring he's done. He, he was just starting to be a really important little little player for them, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was. He, he really was. I mean, obviously, the, the game against Stoke, where he was on fire, really influenced that game. Came on against Arsenal and completely changed the game in Everton's favour. Got the goal and perhaps, met, unfortunately, not to have won the game. But he's had a real impact uh, for Everton in recent weeks. The hamstring's a big blow. The, Morales, he was on the bench. He was keeping... Morales out of the team. He came on and scored. So they do have a replacement in Morales, a top class replacement mm. to replace Delefeu. But he has been absolutely superb. So I'm sure he will be a loss. Yeah, depth of squad is the uh, the only worry, I guess, for Everton and maybe for Liverpool if it, if these injuries do start to I, I think to worsen. Apart from your Chelsea and your Man City and maybe Man United, everyone else, if they get a couple of injuries or suspensions, it it really will test the squad and and, mm. and those results. And that was always said about obviously Liverpool and Everton this season. So January not far away. They need to just see it through and hopefully don't pick up too many more injuries. Yeah. Gareth Barry's stat watch this week. 71 passes, 85% accuracy, but a goal for him. Goal. So that's the only stat that matters. That's the only one you care about, isn't it? Exactly. You know, he's uh, not known for, for getting too many goals. I think that was that his second in an Everton shirt. But he's, he's obviously influencing the game, getting on the ball, keeping it ticking over, but popping up with an important goal as well. So... A hugely successful um, player for Everton this And he's season. still not been on the losing side in an Everton shirt. That's quite interesting. Yeah, well, they, they want him to play every week, <laughs> don't they? And he is doing it at the moment. He's, he's in there and he, he's a big player. He's a good, good loan signing for Everton. Indeed he is. Uh, we just got a bit of time to mention Tranmere. Uh, hammered 4-1 at Carlisle. Uh, this is Ronnie Moore's quote. We were gutless in the second half. Bad as I've ever seen since a manager. We were mentally and physically weak. I expect them to roll their sleeves up and fight. Nine goals conceded in two games, and it's soul-destroying for me and the supporters. I mean, that is as strong a criticism of a, of a team by a manager you're ever likely to hear. He's looking for a reaction there, isn't he? There's been a little mm. bit of a cloud of negativity over Tramir in this recent week or so with all the allegations towards certain players that are on the books there at Tramir. So... It's not been a particularly good week for Tramir and they've been on a great run before the heavy defeat against Peterborough 5 in the Cup. That now needs to put an end to these uh, poor results because they are just about hovering above those relegation places. Yeah, well, they're, they're, they're 20th now, so that's, you know, you, you, you are once a day and we weren't worried, were we, a couple of weeks ago, but now we're starting to worry again. Yeah, I think Ryan Lowe got his he did, he usual scored again. goal, yeah. but no good getting the consolation goal. 
But it's going to be an important Christmas period. They, they will want to be outside those relegation places come January the 1st. So it's important to put an end to this run as soon as possible. Yeah, and these match fixing allegations, as you said, they are quite serious. When you were, when you were playing, obviously, you, were, you wouldn't get involved in anything like that. I wouldn't have penalty against one of them. I'm thinking, what's going on there? <laughs> you know, Was he being... Well, that's the worry. I mean, for me, these players should, should not be allowed to play again. If they're taking bets or doing whatever, whether it's a yellow card or throwing whatever it is, should not be allowed to play football again because, you know, it's about the integrity of the game. We all love the game as football fans, players. It's it's just a fantastic game and anyone that wants to jeopardise that and ruin it, then they don't deserve to be in the game. Did you ever hear any whispers of it going on when you were playing? Never, never. No, I don't understand how, how you'd w want to do something like that. I just just don't understand. No, and you've got to be paid a lot of money to make it worth your while. If you're getting you're getting fairly decent wages of football, even in the even in the lower leagues, you're getting paid more than the average man on the street. So you've it's not just something you do once, is it? If you're involved in it, you need to keep doing it to make it worthwhile, and then you're jeopardising your your whole career. It seems a very strange thing to even want to do. Stupid. I mean, stupid, thick players would do something like that. Just not acceptable at all. It's it's a lack of respect to the football fans, the fellow players. It's just not on at all. And for me, if, if they get found guilty, whoever these players are, we don't ever want to see them on a football pitch again. Fantastic. I think everyone would echo those words. Neil Mellor, thank you very much indeed for hosting another stunning episode of the Neil Mellor Football Show. Thank you to Rubis Cafe in West Kirby for hosting us. Thank you to Colin Bailey for filming us and editing us all perfectly. little grin from Colin there. You'll never get to see what he looks like, I'm afraid, because he's the he's most had a haircut. camera what? show man in history. Haircut. <laughs> OK, folks, one more show before Christmas. Will Liverpool be top of the league next time we speak? See you next time. Bye-bye.